A lot of us with common sense know that Rotten Tomatoes is pretty much garbage when it comes to paid critics. The top critics, the ones that are in the industry, all of those are garbage. We understand and we've been calling out for a long time because it doesn't make sense. They will rate a movie that is pure and utter trash, these high, fresh ratings, and, and make them just to be so great. But then the audience score is the complete opposite. The perfect example... 2016 Ghostbusters, probably one of the most hated movies out there. The audience score is 49%. People absolutely hate this movie. But when you look at the critics' score, all critics, 74%. Top critics only drops down to 72%. Why the big miss? How are they so far off? And well, we understand and we have known for a long time without actually quote unquote knowing that these people must be paid, right? They're, they're paid for their review because a lot of people, before they go and see a movie, they run to Rotten Tomatoes. They'll check and they go, hey, let me see what the critics are saying. But what we have all suspected for a very long time is finally been proven true. Over here on Twitter, Culture Crave, this account broke this news article from Vulture and it says a PR firm has been manipulating the Rotten Tomatoes movie scores for over five years by paying critics directly. Now, I personally think it's been over five years that this stuff's been going on, but this is the only PR firm that has been caught so far. It says, the system is broken. Audiences are dumber. Normal people don't go through reviews like they used to. Rotten Tomatoes is something the studios can game, so they do. The PR firm is Bunker 15, and they pay $50 or more for a review. They often recruit obscure critics who are part of the pool tracked by Rotten Tomatoes. These payments are not typically disclosed, and Rotten Tomatoes says it prohibits reviewing based on a financial incentive. Now, they provide an example. It's a movie with, no, shockingly, Daisy Ridley, hmm, imagine that, uh, called Ophelia. Never saw it. Couldn't even really find it on Rotten Tomatoes. But it says that they use this as an example, and it went from a 46% score to a 62% score. It says, we take the integrity of our scores seriously and do not tolerate any attempts to manipulate them. We have a dedicated team who monitors our platforms regularly and thoroughly investigates and resolve any suspicious activity. The, but this is the article over at Vulture, and it says, the decomposition of Rotten Tomatoes, the most overrated metric in movies, is erratic, reductive, and easily hacked, and yet has Hollywood in its grip. So this is what they were talking about, that Ophelia movie. It says, in 2018, Ophelia was a feminist retelling of Hamlet. Shocker why it turned out to be garbage. And critics who had seen early screenings had published 13 reviews, seven of them negative, which translated to a 46% on the all-important aggregation site of Rotten Tomatoes. But... Just because a tomato meter says the title Rotten, scoring below 60%, doesn't need to stay that way. Bunker 15 went to work. While most PR companies aim to get the attention of critics from top publications, Bunker 15 takes a more bottom-up approach, recruiting obscure, often self-published critics who are nevertheless part of the pool tracked by Rotten Tomatoes. In another break from standard practice, several critics say, Bunker 15 would pay them $50 or more for each review. So one of the employees from that Bunker 15 wrote about this movie that got the negative scores and said, it's a Sundance film and the feeling is that it's been treated a bit harshly by some critics. So the teams involved feel like it would benefit from more input from different critics. More input from different critics is not very subtle code, and the prospective critic wrote back to ask what would happen if he hated the film. The Bunker 15 employee replied that, of course, journalists are free to write whatever they like, but that super nice ones often agreed not to publish bad reviews on their usual websites, but instead quarantined them on a smaller blog that Rotten Tomatoes never sees. And then they go on to show you how the studios get involved in this. So, for example, when a studio is prepping the release of a new title, it will screen the film for critics in advance. It's a film publicist's job to organize these screenings and invite the writers they think will respond the most positively. Then that publicist will set the movie's review embargo in part so that its initial tomato meter score is as high as possible at the moment when it can have the maximal benefits of word of mouth and early ticket sales. 
But most people know what the studios do, and that's why they don't believe these scores. I am not a paid shill. There's a lot of people on here who are not paid shills. They are just going to tell you their honest opinion. Now, there are some YouTubers out there that do get early access because the studios and everything are learning. And they do realize if we give these YouTubers that love us so much early access, they will do the same thing. They will give positive scores. If you're honest about these movies and you say, yeah, this movie kind of sucks. I don't like it. They will remove your early access. They will take it away and you will not go back. They will not work with you because that's the name of the game, unfortunately. I just found this very interesting that it's finally getting called out. Most of us with a brain understand that this has been going on, that these people are paid, that the, the numbers are fudged. Anyone with a brain knows that movies like this and The Last Freaking Jedi are trash movies. And look at these scores. Absolutely insane. But let me know what you guys think about all this stuff down below in the comments. I always love to hear your thoughts. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, take care.